Welcome back everyone for the next part of Library of Ruiner. In the last part, we took care of Netsex's final episode and learned at which point Angela kind of accepted or rather changed her plan for the company. I mean, it seems like up until the final part, she was dead set on ending it all. Everything. All the repeats, all the resets, everything was supposed to end. The suffering was supposed to end for everyone. But, <laughs> but, her last hope, probably the only thing that kept her sane after all those millions of years, that little hope that at the end, at the very end, when X becomes A, after requiring all of the memories and confronting himself that she would finally be accepted into the happy final that was presented to all of them. After that hope got crushed, it's kind of understandable why uh, out of desperation she would start to form a new wish for herself, since it seems like her dad would have been pointless at that point. Everyone else would have died for the sake of saving humanity, but she's just a machine that's getting turned off because she served her purpose. She, did, she didn't want to settle with this. It's totally understandable. She, wa she was literally used for millions of years, traumatized for exactly the same amount. Any type of friendship or development was denied. Except of the evil path. She was supposed to be evil to them in order to make them very depressed, right? Very depressed. We saw that during uh, the final episode from Rod. It's kind of understandable that if somebody's last hope is crushed, they would cling to the next possible thing, which was the pillar of light that probably gave her a new idea for a wish. What is if she is actually human for once? What is if she could actually feel what the others are feeling. If she's human, nobody could just shove her to the side and telling her that she's just a part of a stage, right? After all, the machine isn't supposed to play an important role, right? That is also why Chesset's uh, idea of uh, allowing machines to take care of abnormalities never worked. Machines are not supposed to get involved with the script from the very start. Ah, oh God, after every final episode, I can understand her suffering more and more. It is really bothering me. <laughs> it's really bothering me. Why couldn't we... Why couldn't the game start it sooner? Why couldn't it start sooner? Now I feel even bad that I had to reset for the final ending. I had to make her go through that again. In order to see the secret ending, the actual ending for this game. <laughs> That leads to this game. <laughs> oh man. But but hey, at the very least at the very least we can make up for that now, right? Yeah, we totally make it up to her. She's becoming more and more human. She even said thank you to Netzek. From all people. The guy who she literally punished once probably because she's he's literally drunk all the time. But she still said thank you to them. Even Roland, you know? There's improvement, she's getting better and better, and I'm pretty happy about that. <sighs> and, and, on Sherry on top of that, it seems like we get uh, another one of those special cutscenes on Roland's floor as well after that. It's a final reward, probably another thank you gift from Angela. <laughs> Who knows, right? Who knows? I mean, she already gave me the best present that you could possibly imagine in form of the capo. <laughs> Maybe she knew that I really like Silent Orchestra. That's probably the reason why I like Bonbon so much. The combination of Bonbon and Silent Orchestra. The invisible wall that took care of all the white fixers. Oh, it was so great. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> ah, but I should probably not stall anymore. After all, there is. Uh, we are going to send out an invitation today. The first star invitation. And who knows how long that is going to be, right? So let's jump right back in there and see what's going on on Roland's floor. With Angela, Markov, the Essets, and Hot. Okay. Um, hey there. 
What are you guys talking so seriously about? This is a serious matter indeed. Right. This issue has to be settled now. Huh? You're in so much trouble. What? <laughs> um, just tell me what's going on. Natsik ran off? What? The Flow of Art was responsible for cleaning the library's corridor this week. What? Do you have any guesses on where he might be? No, of course not. No way. Hmm. His assistant librarian must have all disappeared with him too. What? Penguin as well? And Nathan? <laughs> Cleaning? Oh, I don't remember ordering you to clean this place. Well, we've concluded that well, each library, a librarian, should clean their own rooms. It's better to take turns to clean the corridors, as they are public space for all of us. Ah, oh, that makes sense. You lot always love to cause a bigger fuss than necessary, don't you? Do you want us to stop it? No, no, I don't really mind. Thank goodness. <laughs> Anyways, that is why we've been wondering, just where did Nexic hide away? <sighs> oh. All right, here's that sick. What? What? What, the what happened? Did you just snap him into existence? Well, it takes no effort for me to locate and relocate you lots wherever it's in the library you may be. Oh, Netzek! We promised to keep the order we decided on. You're so mean, running away when it's your turn. You reek of alcohol too, and so do your assistant librarians behind you. Oh no! <laughs> all of them! <laughs> you actually took them all along? Uh, I can explain there. There's a good explanation for this. What explanation? Let's hear your story then. Now, now. Let's like, we'll surely be careful next time. That's enough scolding. No, I must hear what he has to say. Let's act. Ah, uh, look, uh, I, I didn't feel like cleaning, but as I was, I still was gonna do it, I guess. I was crumbling to myself about it, then Roland came along and- Whoa, whoa, whoa! Roland came along and said he found a good spot to goof off. Really? Says he will tell me where, where if I share some of my beer and how I can skip clean- Oh... Whoa! Well, looks like he's still too drunk to speak straight, huh? Yeah, totally. Don't mind him at all. <laughs> he sure loves to drink for, for someone so weak with it. <laughs> uh, Roland, is what that's exact true? <laughs> no, I know, it can't be. <laughs> I can faintly smell alcohol from you as well, now that Ned's has confessed it. I'm disappointed in you too. Alright, I'm sorry. I, I helped Netsa clean the corridors today, so please forgive me. Hmm. No. How about you join them on the cleaning roster from now on, rather than just for the day, huh? I mean, you also have a floor. What? Oh, that's a good idea. I could forgive your misbehavior today in that case. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> good luck with the cleaning, then. Oh, it's his, his turn. Already! <laughs> You're also prone to make a fuss, aren't you, Roland? Uh huh. Well, maybe, maybe, just, just maybe you shouldn't have uh, gave him that idea, huh? Maybe you sh I mean, he hands out the beer whenever you ask. It didn't have to make such a deal. <laughs> now you screwed everyone over. And look how many floors we have. Imagine all the corridors in between them. That's a lot. And there's only like a couple of uh, of people who actually have five floors, or rather five guys in their floors, right? Is different Gabora, Shesset, and Bina also going to do that? There's no way Bina's gonna clean the floors though, or rather the corridors, right? I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine that Bina would do that. At all. <laughs> She's a queen. Queens don't... Uh, don't do that, unless it's specifically asked and it's very necessary. I, I don't think Bina would otherwise join any type of cleaning. She would rather prefer to shear them on on the sideline with a charming gesture and maybe a cup of tea. 
Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, but the others, the, the others would probably join. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the others would join. And if it's just one floor that skips, we don't really have to worry about that. Actually speaking, Crazy, Cena, Fortune, they, they are totally going to help as well. It would be a bit unfair to give the uh, three guys the order to clean all of those corridors, right? It would be a bit unfair. Very unfair. Nevertheless, let's head over to the invitation and see which of those pairs we're going to tackle first. Uh, let's see, which requirement do you guys have? The Book of Index? That's not so bad. Then we have Book of Smiling Faces and the Distortion thingy. It's, ugh, crank children? Ah, uh, preferably not. That fight is... I mean, it's not so bad. I actually learned that it's quite easy for Hot's team to, to beat Philip relatively with ease. Simply because uh, Hot's ego page, the small gift thingy, forces the little children to use a very, very weak card that turn. Which in turn makes, means any type of counter dice breaks through the fatal thingy relatively easy. It's, it's really, it's really broken. It's really broken. If you go for the crying children, use Hot's Floor. It's just the best. It's simply the best. Anyways, uh, the fourth path. Mm, clean up crew. Okay. I would almost say that the left and the right one are probably the easiest to replace. Uh, not so entirely sure about this one. I'm not really looking forward to the distortion book thingy. So, should I go with the left one? I mean, during the star reception I went with the puppets first. And if I go further down I went with the dawn office first. It'd be a bit unfair if I always go to the right. You know what? We're going left, right. Yeah, that's the idea. We're going left first, then we're going to go right, and then we're just gonna decide who's going to follow next, right? Yeah, let's let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Okay, the book of the index policy. Actually speaking, if you're interested interested in those books, I might be able to get more of those index cards, and then I could create an even better version of me, right? There is the possibility of that, <laughs> and we all know how busted Mio is, right? At least the uh, Mio's key pages. Oh god, what? Okay, uh, the thumb. Ah, that's not the index. Um, thank you for participating in the thumb summit, everyone. Yes, underboss. It's good to see our family gathering up in one place. Let's see. We have 19 seats filled. That means all but one family have attended. That's uh, Romano's cattle. They're still in the process of reorganizing structure after being attacked by the Black Silent a while ago. Hmm, still recovering, I see. Thanks for the report. Cut those friends off. We don't need a toothless mutt that can't rearm itself with that much time. Cut them off? Understood. Take your hands off Elkop's nest, and the library. The farm will be in direct command of the matter from now on. I would like to give a word of appreciation for the families that have shown much effort. And... BULLSHIT! You have no idea how many of our members died for that! Ooh, that was the Kuro Kumo, right? Our family already poured a tremendous sum of money into this! Ooh! Who gave you the right to speak up? You gotta stay quiet when the elders talking pals. You know better than that. When a subordinate dares to speak without the superior's permission, take their lower jaw. Remember the rules. You took the lower jaw? I apologize on behalf of my underling. Please forgive the rudeness of my subordinates. I'll educate this half-witted fool on my end later. However, I must say that I share their sentiments in all honesty. Why should we back out now, after we've given so much effort? I understand how disappointed it may be, 
All of you have spilled much blood in order to earn your share of turf before the street recreation happens. I wish I could give you a sizable chunk of the land for each and every family who have gathered here. I really do. But the Capo de Capi demands otherwise. We have no choice but to obey it. The situation outside is going in an unexpected direction. A party other than the Index is involved in this conflict. The one who pilfered our fabric. I'm deeply ashamed, sir. Don't be too hard on yourself now. I'll pardon your manners for taking only the left hand. What? Only the left hand? Are you kidding? And you accept that? Thank you, sir. Oh, what kindness! You cut off my hand, huh? Great! <laughs> Do understand that we can't let such travel issues distract ourselves in times like these. We must carry out the Capo de Capi's order first and foremost. Okay, what is that? Capo de Capi? Just what is the Capo de Capi's thinking to make demands like this? Oh! Dude! You're not supposed to speak up! Didn't you hear? The girl! <laughs> Denise already reminded you once! And uh, when one dares question the orders of the superior, take their head! How insolent of you to question the intention of the Capo de Capi. Such impure frauds should be uprooted. Purge every member of the Knights All by tonight. Yes, sir. I'll give the word. Talk about an impatient young fellow. It couldn't have hurt to quietly wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh god! The, the Capo de Capi told me our right. The Index. Yes. Our boss insisted that we mustn't let the Index claim a single area of the Alcove's nest. But you, my friend, don't quite have the power to take on the proxies of the Index, hence the order to pull out. So we should save up our strength at the moment? I understand now. This goes to the other Sotokopi Soto of the funds and the families as well. Our ambition is not something as short-sighted as taking over a few blocks of space. Do you understand? Yes, underboss. Could it be that the Cooper de Capi thingy is uh, the boss? I mean, they called him the underboss, so somebody has to be higher than him, right? That could be a name. That could... I mean, it... maybe. <laughs> They're probably going to explain that, right? They, they have to explain that at one point. <laughs> um, the farm seems to have quite a rigid structure, uh, structure, right? Yeah, it seems like they already cut off a seed because they didn't regroup in time. <laughs> the index probably gave uh, you a good idea already, but yeah. The fingers have rules and hierarchy. That I would only describe as paranoid. The specific may be different, but if anyone breaks the rules, that poor fella is done for. Although each finger has its own way of purging rule breakers. I suppose that's the strategy they evolved to survive in the city, huh? Spot on. They can only survive by shoving themselves into a sturdy, unbreakable shell. And five syndicates that cramp themselves all the way into the core of that hard shell and stood on the apex of the back streets earned the title of the five fingers. Well, in any ways, our job as the staff of the library, a library is to receive any guests that comes here. And the thumb has no exception, so that means those guys are coming over, huh? <laughs> it's not gonna be so good. Wait, there's no? Uh, okay, we don't get any type of interaction between them but then again it seems like yeah that's just the foot soldiers it's probably just foot soldiers okay the thumb soldatus page so i guess soldat or i mean soldiers come with a speed die armor supply after every three successful attacks of melee combat page add a random ammunition to hand concentration Gain one power at the 
Let's see. Oh, shoot. This guy's a range attackers? Oh, yes, they are. Reload. Add an a random ammunition to hand. Draw one page. Thumb exclusive page can only be set in the decks of thumb members. Okay, ammunition when used or discarded give bonus effect on ranged combat pages. So they actually get bullets? Which boost up range pages? Suppress shot. On use, discard a page with the lowest cost. If an ammunition was discarded, all offensive dice on this page gain one power. For eight on hit, inflict one bleed next scene. Thumb exclusive, ammunition. Okay. There is also. It doesn't seem like this card has the exclusive thing. Wait, wait, wait. I need to check that again. Lapus, show me, show me your cards, Lapus. No, don't turn it off. I need your cards. Single use. Does that have. No, it doesn't have single use. Are they actually able to use that again? I mean, they are using ammunition, which discards other cards. Maybe? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So that means we finally get uh, an option to use gun pages without losing our decks. Without being on a timer, is that it? Because if it is, that would actually make gun pages a bit more viable around here. Class and respect. On use, restore one light. Inflict bleed. Okay, that's good. A new light recovery card with bleed effect. A bayonet combat. Add two random ammunition to hand. More ammunition cards. Round shock. On use, discard two pages with the lowest cost from hand and draw a page. All dice on this page gain one power for each ammunition discarded. So plus two. Oh god, it's a 510 hit. The free stagger damage on target. And all of those uh, dice get the power boost, right? Which means 510 is actually 712. Ooh, okay. Focus fire on use. Discard up to four zero cost pages from hand. Offensive dice on this page gain plus one for each ammunition, which means it could it has a potential of four. Which means the seven four seven seventeen! <laughs> what? <laughs> Inflict fragile next scene! That has the potential to go up to twenty-one. And the other one can go to twelve. Eight twelve. And do all of them have that? All of them have that. And I only have one floor for this. Okay. Uh, I can only bring four guys. Well. Uh, let's think about this for a second. <laughs> Who has the most, I don't know, singular strike users around here? I think the Burra's team would be the best for this, right? I need strong pages in order to get through this. But at the same time, that could give me that could give Bong Bong the chance to actually use Yield My Flesh for once. Do I want to risk that though? <laughs> Seems a bit reckless. Might be a bit reckless, but you know what? I take it for the sake of you and my flesh. I want to use it at least once. I just want to use it once, even if it is reckless. I need, I need to use it at least once, right? Once. <laughs> okay. Oh God, they all have double dices. I don't even have the dice advantage anymore. Ah, this. And they all rolled higher than me. Great. Well, uh, at the very least... What's uh, 4-8? Okay, 4-8 isn't really so bad. They don't have anything that boosts up their... Uh, their con concentration, so they get, they get power boost on the first turn. 
They also have uh, the paralysis though, so in that regard, I should be able to still win this with extra fuel. But it seems like, on first glance, I kinda have to respond to all of their clashes first before anything else. I don't really have room of intercepting anything. Which is a bit counterproductive. Oh, I already have healed my flesh. Perfect. Now I just need the right guy who uses the right cards. It actually has a decent chance of winning. The Shrine of Music. You need to tackle that one first. This is very important. That guy has to die first. And preferably, we need to draw a page as well. Okay, Bonbon. Okay, Mint won the first clash. Bonbon break through. Even better. Deflected. Good. One third of her staggers already gone. At the very least, we're going to get their staggers as well, so that's good. Come on, Bong Bong. Don't lose to them. Show them who's the boss. Show them the power of determination. <laughs> and a lot of bash attacks. A lot of bash attacks. There we go. Still alive. And at the very least, he's not able to do anything for a turn. Why are they always so fast? <laughs> They're always so fast, I didn't even get the, the page draw. No, you're going to sweep the streets with this guy in order to inflict him with paralysis. In combination of drawing a page, since we kind of need that. And I guess uh, the, the right guy is probably going to be our next target. We'll see, right? We'll see. I have first I have to Oh my god. Oh yeah, bong bong! Bong bong! That's good! That's very good! Okay, mint! At the very least we were able to get the final hit, so that's good. That's very important. That's uh that's going to allow us to do a little bit more damage in the next round. Are we able to get the stagger, Tiferet? Are we able to get that stagger? At the very least, one of them is already down, so that's good. Law for justice. Hate might be useful. After Clash Lewis, take two decks, uh, four stacker damage. Gain one strength next scene. Hmm. Recovery could be helpful, but I think. I think. I'm going to go for hatred. Yeah, hatred might become handy. Maybe not right away, but there's a chance it could become handy. Should I just... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Go all out. Differ it. There's a chance you might recover some light after that. Kind of going to hope for that. And we can't really do anything else. Okay, let's take down another one of them. One broken heart. Healed my flesh. I didn't get the other thing, but it's fine. <laughs> At the very least, uh, they weren't really able to. Ah, never mind. <laughs> I was about to say. At the very least, they didn't stack on my harm. <laughs> but no, they stack on my harm. <laughs> At the very least, we are almost uh, going to get the third of them, so that's good. Here's a text dice from Max. Value the bonus dagger damage. No, bonus percent HP damage. Mm. Nah, I guess we're going to go for the recovery boost. We still have another fight after this one. Haru needs the recovery. It doesn't really seem like they're interested in Haru right now, but she needs the recovery at one point. Why are you using that now? I just used you in my flesh. Do I have another one? No, I didn't. Ah, great! <laughs> well, good luck with Mount Delay and a sharpened blade, I would say. Wait, which of them was it again? No, this one's the strong one, right? I guess. Well, we don't really care about that, I guess. Oh god, both of them go for it! Both of them go for it! <laughs> okay! Counterproductive. I'm gonna go for the protective card then. I can already say that. If we have to clash against something, I should probably, I should probably pick the one 
That seems a bit easier to be handled, right? Yeah, let's pick the one that seems a bit more tame. A bit more tame. Can't really do anything else about the others, but... Bonbon is fine. Bonbon is able to tank that is fine! Alright, I can't even intercept it like this because... Range attack always go first! But at the very least, uh, they weren't really able to, uh, to stagger us, huh? Except mint. Except mint. <laughs> oh god. You got two of them? I'm even going to make sure that you win by boosting your strength up a little. I'm just going to hope that it actually hits the right target. Because if it doesn't, it's going to cause a little bit of an issue. <laughs> a little bit of an issue. Just saying. A tiny bit of. Oh god. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. At the very least, you didn't. Uh, Oh shoot, you didn't lose the first clash. <laughs> didn't lose the first clash. If you would have hit the first one though, that would have been probably better, but it's not like we can change that now. A couple of deck draws, I'm gonna lower his damage just in case. You never know what helps with all of you. Puppet block, back to Tiferitz, and finish them off. Okay. I have to say, sometimes I don't quite understand range attacks. Sometimes I'm just, I just don't understand range attacks. I was pretty sure that I redirected it to Tiferet, who was supposed to redirect the hit, right? Wasn't it a clash? Nevertheless, nevertheless, Tiferet is almost dead. But at least we won the first round. <laughs> this, I should have probably picked up Gabor after all. <laughs> the experiment is not successful. The experiment is not successful. <laughs> uh, do they? It's just the same guys. It is literally the same guys once again. With the same cards and the same passives. I think they just sent in the, the scouts in order to see what uh, our library is capable of, huh? And the very least looks like that. Okay, guys, one more time. I know it doesn't really look so good right now. Don't worry, we we have light recovery now, and uh, we should be fine. The guy at the bottom, and make sure that he dies. Okay, bonbon. Let's hope different is safe. We can't allow them to get our bonbon. All right, our different. Okay, it's very important business around here. Do not give them any chance. To Oh god! Any chance to recover? <laughs> there we go! Perfect job! What to law? Friends attack! A lot of love! The heals for everyone! I think Tiferet got like one point! <laughs> That's not a lot! That's actually nothing! Oh god! Oh yes! The King of Greeds! Um... Ah, uh, what do I want? If the first dice of the combat stage wins, destroy all remaining dice. Yes, maybe? Get endurance for each clash one in the scene. Oh. Mm. Endurance seems tempting. Let's go for endurance. I need to lose clashes in order to get the hate effect, which means I'm gonna give uh, the endurance buff. To probably our min, since he has literally the most HP right now. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. The guy up front with an extra life recovery and wait it out for the next turn. Come on, min! Get the endurance buff! Get the endurance! You need the endurance! I'm telling you, you need you need the endurance! Why is Tiffin not getting any HP? Why are you not healing her, Bonbon? Huh? Why are you playing with my heart like this? Ah, shoot. Another hate. Okay, was able to break through that. Not quite enough to put him in the stagger range, but that's okay. That guy's about to die next turn. Well, Mint didn't really win that many clashes, but at the very least, you got one endurance. Yes. And I guess we can add another light extraction. Into the mix. Yeah. 
Yeah, Bong Bong Min still two are going to handle this just fine, right? Yeah, totally. I'm gonna get the boost from Hatred. A stagger for him, that's good. Free hit for Tiferet. Mint is able to break through without any issues, that's perfect. He's about to die. One of them already died, that's good. The oh god, Bong Bong. <laughs> that's good! That's good! He almost killed both of them! <laughs> Now, if uh, everyone would just stagger, I would really appreciate that. I guess not. Should I just give a greet now? You know what? Why not? Why not? Both of them are staggered anyways, right, Tiferet? Both of them are staggered anyways. How dare you guys put my Tiferet in danger, right? How dare you? Uh, how about a little bit of... Uh, Unforgettable memory in combination with Will of the Prescripts. I still wasn't really able to use Will in my flesh, but at the very least, at the very least, Tiferet got into the range of uh, Overcome Crisis, right? Yeah, that's totally going to be nothing. They are so dead. <laughs> she is <are> so dead. <laughs> okay. Well. I mean, this could have certainly went better. But at the very least, we didn't lose. <laughs> at the very least, we didn't lose. And I didn't have the chance to use Overcome Crisis, but a hey, Mint got the sparkle effect, right? Mint got the sparkle effect. I take that. And I got a lot of the uh, books of the funds. So that's good as well. And even though we didn't really have an introduction scene between our visitors and our Angela, we still got an after scene, so th that's still good, right? That's still good. It looks like the farm mainly uses firearms. They also seem to use bullets in various ways, as opposed to the full stop offers we received some time ago. Yeah, this time around they don't really use up their, their pages, which is very good. Which is very good, because that was literally the only downside to range pages. You could use them as quickly as you want, but if once you use them up, you don't really have access to them anymore for that entire act, right? I really didn't like that gimmick that much, especially after seeing all those final episodes with Angela and the other floors. But well, it seems like uh, the farm is going to fix that issue, right? These people would swing the gun itself as a melee weapon too. I know, right? That's because of the barrette. Like I said before, bullets are expensive. Even though the bullets the farm use are self-made, the price is anything but affordable. They utilize bullets in a clever way depending on the situation, but won't actually fire them unless it's a huge deal. Does that mean they, most, uh, they mostly use their guns as close-range weapon like that then? Yeah. Yep, a good swing that can easily crush a human's bone. The guns are made using a pretty nifty technology and material. And on top of it, most of those rifles have a blade on top. <gasps> Hogma! Are you kidding me? Right now? Already? <laughs> the flow of religion of all things. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Uh, some guns have a beret on top of, a, of on top of it in order to be able to stab and slash the enemies as well, but most of the time they actually use it for stab hits. So, yeah, sometimes sometimes you run out of ammunition and you need to make sure that your soldiers have still a way to defend themselves, right? Sure, most of them also have another knife on their legs or on their body, but it's always good to have it on a, a longer reach. You would never want to get into a close combat situation with your enemies, right? Unless, of course, you're a pro. But even then, way too risky. You don't want any knife wounds, right? Anyways, religion, huh? This floor smells like... danger? Okay. So you've come, Roland. <laughs> hey, Hogma, I am Roland, the guy who's going to be bringing books here from now on? Why are you so nervous? <laughs> And you're dubbed as Angela's servant, or rather double as an age Angela's servant. Yes, a servant I am. You seem rather content with your occupation. It's not about satisfaction or anything. I'm just doing this because the, 
The only other option was dead. Quite literally. <laughs> you ain't exactly fond of me or Angela, huh? Judging from your overbearing attitude right out of the gate. I have no obligation to treat your ilk with any courtesy or greeting. Any fate I would have had has long been crushed. Okay. Well, I bet you would make a good friend with Yesa down there. <laughs> I dedicated my entire life to fulfill the wish of a single person. And Angela stopped that wish. I got it. Plus, she probably loaned me as well since I'm her full-time assistant. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean, you already had an agreement and everything, didn't you? So in that regard, you shouldn't really loan them, right? You're supposed to help her complete the library and find the one book for that she seeks, right? Do you truly believe that, that the one singular book exists as Angela claims? What? But duh, she wouldn't be looking for it if it didn't exist, right? Indeed. She firmly believes that the invitation will lead her to that book somehow. Then let me ask you. How could you put your fate in the invitation and Angela so easily? Including her promise to give you freedom once her goal has been met. And well... I mean, it's not like he actually has a choice, right? At this point, it's either do or die. He can't leave the library either. So he can only trust Angela, right? And she can literally teleport anyone from anywhere inside of this library, so you can't really go against her either. Well, I mean, obviously, the library is expanding as a matter of fact, and Angela and the other librarians are slowly changing too, yeah? So that is the base of your fate? <laughs> How preposterous. Hey! You don't need that many evidence in order to believe in someone. And what's your point, old man? Just bring you more books. I've spent much time in boredom until now. What? Hokma is not interested in any of this. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, at the very least, we were able to unlock him, huh? So that's good. That That's good. Whoa, you have four different books requirement? Okay. Uh and Roland has a Oh I was about to say Roland has a new abnormality. It's actually the Snow Queen, but wait a second, I have to check my time really quickly. Ah uh, I knew it! I knew it! Almost an hour again. The fights, they last so long, right? Even if it is just two battles in a row. <laughs> Anyways, um I hope you guys had fun. With today's part, in the next part, not entirely sure if we're going to jump right into uh, Roland's uh, abnormality battle, since uh, I kind of was looking forward to all the invitations for a while now. A bit surprised that Roland would just suddenly pop out a new abnormality like this, but oh well, right? Oh well. I think instead of going for the abnormality, we are just. Huh? Oh, there's a second episode to this. Oh, okay, but then again, it makes sense. We only got the foot soldiers, right? I didn't see any of those characters that were talking in the first scene. Yeah, I think instead of going for the abnormality on Roland's floor, I kind of want to send out more invitations first. After all, we had the final episode, and before that, two abnormalities, and before that, another two abnormalities. Yeah, Roland's abnormality can wait for a turn, right? Yeah, let's wait until there's another exclamation mark or something, so that I can fight both of them at the same time. Huh? Sounds like a plan, right? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had fun with today's part, and see you in the next one. Until then! Bye-bye!